today what the Lord has to say about the book of 1 Kings chapter 8. Before we get started into that, we'll go ahead and get started into prayer. Come Lord Jesus, we invite you into this video today to speak through me everything you want us to know. Give us spiritual eyes to see the things you want us to see, spiritual ears to hear the words that are spoken today, a spiritual heart to be open and able to receive all that you have for us, Father. Give us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge about what we're about to read, watch, and listen to as we put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet of readiness, shield of faith, sword of the Spirit. Guard and protect us our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world as we're traveling to and from different locations. Just travel for us, drive for us, protect our vehicles from other vehicles and their vehicles from ours, and send down our guardian angels to protect us. We thank you for them. Give them and us the rest and restoration we both need to do the work you've called us to do. Just work in us, for us, and through us, and protect us from other people, and protect them from us. If there's anyone we need to be praying for, speaking encouraging words to, and or listening to, just show us that person. We pray against any and all distractions, so take them away from us so we can focus on you. We pray that you heal our bodies, minds, and spirits, Father God. We pray against any attacks of the enemy over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's blessings over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's favor over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray that you give us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world, godly and divine wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to make the right choices today, Father, not only for the betterment of us, but others as well. And Father God, we pray for the safety of our cities and the people in them. We pray that you show mercy on us and heal our land. We come to you in repentance and ask that you forgive us of each and every sin, whether it be in word, thought, and or deed that we've committed against you, others, and or ourselves as we forgive those who've sinned against us. We pray for our enemies and anyone listening today who has not yet accepted you as their Lord and Savior and would like to do so now. We pray John 3, 16 over them. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So if you prayed that prayer with me today, you can know that you're going to go to heaven someday with the rest of the people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For it's not by works so that no man shall boast. And there's not enough good works that any of us can do to earn our way to heaven. It's only through that perfect sinless life. That was Jesus being born, died, buried, and rising again for our sins and the sins of the world that any of us get to go to heaven. So Father, we thank you for this person that accepted you as their Lord and Savior today. Help them in their daily walk and relationship with you to hear your still small voice and obey what you tell them to do. And help them to get into your prayer with you each and every day. That's just talking to you like we're doing right now, listening for your voice and obeying what you tell them to do. And help them to get into your word each and every day, which is the Bible, and stands for basic instructions before leaving earth, so they can discern between the truth and the lies, and the truth will set them free. Show them the gifts and talents that you've given them, and how to use them for your glory, to help those around them that are in need. It's a God divine appointment that you're here today. God brought you to this channel because he loves you so much. He wants to have a relationship with you so you can go to heaven someday with the rest of the people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And he wants to be your best friend, your confidant, someone you can just trust and lean on in times that you do not understand. Father, I thank you for this person that accepted you as their Lord and Savior and everyone listening. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said, Amen. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started into what the Lord has to say about the book of 1 Kings chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles and you like to follow along, go ahead and turn them to the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 and we'll get started. Thank you. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Athenium, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark, and they brought up the Ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. Even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place unto the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle. And they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled with the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then spake Solomon, The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee an house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build an house that my name might be therein, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build an house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord hath performed his word that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with their fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee, in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who hast kept with thy servant David my father that hath promised him, thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father that thou promised me him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry, and to the prayer, which thy servant prayeth before thee today. That thy eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, 
My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. And hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. Do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, fear far or near, and if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried. Captives and repent, and make supplication unto thee and the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul, and the land of their enemies which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant, and to the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, and thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer, supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees, with his hands spread up to heaven, and he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel. 
According to all that he promised, there hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him, to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know the Lord is God, and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments, as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord, two and twenty thousand oxen, and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day did the king hollow the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt, before the Lord our God seven days and seven days even 14 days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. And that was the end of what the Lord has to say about the book of First Kings chapter 8. Hope y'all enjoyed and were blessed by it. Till next time. Bye.